a sound like nothing else, part mechanical symphony, part banshee scream. The Detroit Diesel 6V71, affectionately known as the Screaming Jimmy, didn't just power America's trucks, buses, and boats for nearly six decades. It defined what a workhorse engine should sound like, feel like, and most importantly, endure like. From 1957 until well into the 1990s, this two-stroke V6 diesel became the heartbeat of American industry. Delivering 200 to 350 horsepower depending on configuration, the 6V71 powered everything from Greyhound buses to commercial fishing boats, military vehicles to emergency generators. Its distinctive sound, created by the roots-type blower forcing air through the cylinders, announced its presence blocks away. But here's what made the 6V71 truly special. It was a two-stroke diesel in a four-stroke world, fighting against conventional wisdom and winning through sheer reliability. So how did this unconventional engine become an American icon? Historical Context and Development The story begins in 1937 when General Motors established the Detroit Diesel Engine Division, building on GM's successful locomotive diesel technology from Electromotive and Winton engines. Detroit Diesel's mission was clear. Create smaller, highway-capable diesel engines for trucks, buses, and industrial applications. In 1938, Detroit Diesel introduced the Series 71. The 71 designating 71 cubic inches of displacement per cylinder. These were revolutionary two-stroke diesels, featuring a 4.25-inch bore and 5.00-inch stroke, with a roots-type blower providing the scavenging air necessary for two-stroke operation. The inline versions, from single-cylinder 171S to mighty inline 6671S, quickly proved their worth in trucks, buses, and military applications. When World War II arrived, the 671 found its calling. It powered landing craft, tanks, generators, and countless military vehicles, earning a reputation for starting reliably regardless of conditions and running continuously when four-stroke engines quit. The military learned what Detroit Diesel already knew. Two-stroke simplicity and durability trumped conventional complexity. By the late 1950s, demand for more power led Detroit Diesel to develop V-configuration engines. In 1957, they introduced the V71 series, starting with the 6V71, six cylinders arranged in a 90-degree V pattern. This configuration doubled the inline 371's power output while maintaining compact dimensions ideal for highway trucks and buses. The 6V71 combined 426 cubic inches of total displacement with the proven two-stroke architecture that had made the inline versions legendary. The Golden Age. Throughout the 1960s and 1970s, the Detroit 6 Phi 71 achieved ubiquity in American transportation. Greyhound lines standardized on Detroit diesel power, and the distinctive sound of 6 V71s became synonymous with long-distance bus travel. Trucking companies discovered that 6 V71-powered tractors could handle cross-country hauling with remarkable reliability, particularly when turbocharged versions delivering 300-plus horsepower arrived. The marine industry embraced the 6 V71 with particular enthusiasm. Commercial fishing boats, tugboats, and offshore vessels found the engine's continuous duty capabilities perfect for demanding ocean environments. The roots blower provided positive scavenging that helped prevent water ingestion, while the simple two-stroke design meant fewer parts to fail far from port. Twin 6 Vi 71s became a standard power plant configuration for workboats and fishing vessels from 40 to 70 feet. Military applications continued expanding. The 6 Vi 71 powered everything from M113 armored personnel carriers to LARCV amphibious vehicles, proving its versatility extended far beyond civilian transportation. 
Emergency services discovered the engine's instant start capability made it ideal for fire trucks and ambulances where response time mattered. The distinctive sound became part of American industrial culture. Unlike the steady rumble of four-stroke diesels, the 6V71's supercharged scream announced its presence unmistakably. Mechanics could diagnose problems. A mechanically driven roots type blower continuously forced air into the cylinders through ports uncovered when pistons descended. This fresh air pushed exhaust gases out through exhaust valves in the cylinder head, simultaneously scavenging combustion byproducts and charging cylinders with fresh air for the next cycle. This design provided significant advantages. Every piston produced power on every downstroke, doubling the power pulses of equivalent four-stroke engines. The result was incredibly smooth operation despite being just six cylinders plus exceptional low-end torque, ideal for starting heavy loads. The continuous airflow from the roots blower also provided superior cooling, allowing sustained high-load operation that would overheat four-stroke competitors. The modular construction was brilliantly simple. Individual cylinder assemblies, called power packs, could be removed and replaced without pulling the entire engine. Wet cylinder liners, standardized pistons, and interchangeable fuel injectors meant repairs could happen roadside with basic tools. The 17 to 1 compression ratio, 18.7 to 1 on naturally aspirated versions, ensured reliable starting and efficient combustion. Turbocharged versions added another layer of performance. The turbocharger worked with the roots blower rather than replacing it, creating a compound charged system delivering exceptional power density and altitude compensation. Challenges rise. By the late 1970s, the 6V71's two-stroke advantages were becoming liabilities in a rapidly changing regulatory environment. Emissions regulations, virtually non-existent when the 71 series debuted, were tightening dramatically. The 6V71's design, with its overlap period when intake and exhaust ports were simultaneously open, inherently allowed some unburned fuel to pass through to the exhaust, creating hydrocarbon emissions that four-stroke engines avoided. Fuel economy became another pressure point. While the 6V71 delivered acceptable fuel consumption for its era, modern four-stroke diesels with electronic injection and turbocharging were achieving significantly better miles per gallon. The roots blower, essential for two-stroke operation, consumed considerable parasitic horsepower even when engine load was light. Four-stroke engines needed no such constant air supply, giving them inherent efficiency advantages. Noise regulations targeted the 6V71's distinctive character. What enthusiasts loved, that unmistakable supercharger whine and mechanical clatter, was precisely what regulators wanted eliminated. Urban areas began restricting or banning older diesel equipment based on noise levels, and the 6V71 was an obvious target. Perhaps most significantly, electronic engine management was revolutionizing diesel technology. Four-stroke engines adapted easily to electronic fuel injection, precise timing control, and sophisticated diagnostics. The 6V71's mechanical fuel injection and governor systems, while robust and field serviceable, couldn't achieve the precision control that emissions standards increasingly demanded. Detroit Diesel recognized these challenges and responded by developing their Series 64-stroke engine in the 1980s, acknowledging that two-stroke diesel's time in on-highway applications was ending. The company that had pioneered two-stroke diesel success was now leading the transition away from the very technology that made them famous. The transition, the 6V71's gradual exit from new production applications, happened through the 1980s and early 1990s, though the exact timeline varied by market. Highway truck applications ended first as emissions standards tightened and fuel economy requirements increased. The last new trucks with 6V71 power rolled off assembly lines in the mid-1980s, replaced by Detroit's Series 60 and competitive four-stroke engines. Bus applications held on slightly longer. 
Transit agencies that had standardized on Detroit diesel power were reluctant to abandon proven reliability. But by 1990, even loyal customers were specifying Series 60 engines for new buses. The 6V71 had powered American public transportation for over three decades, but that era was definitively ending. Marine applications proved more resistant to change. The 6V71's continuous duty capabilities, simplicity, and proven saltwater reliability kept it competitive in commercial fishing and workboat applications well into the 1990s. Production of marine-certified 6V71 engines continued until 1995, making it among the last two-stroke Detroit diesels manufactured. Industrial and generator applications extended the 6V71's life even further. Stationary power generation didn't face on-highway emissions regulations, and the engine's ability to accept sustained full-load operation made it ideal for backup power. Some facilities continue running 6V71 generators installed in the 1970s and 1980s, testament to the engine's fundamental durability. The end of production didn't mean the end of the 6V71. Rebuild programs, robust aftermarket support, and enormous installed base meant these engines continued operating for decades after Detroit Diesel stopped manufacturing them. Marine operators particularly held onto 6V71 power, knowing that modern replacements, while more efficient and cleaner, rarely matched the original's straightforward reliability. Detroit Diesel's transition to four-stroke engines was complete by the mid-1990s, but the two-stroke legacy lived on in countless engines still earning their keep worldwide. Legacy and Modern Reality Today Nearly 70 years after the V-71 series introduction and three decades since production ended, six V-71 engines remain remarkably common in marine and stationary power applications. This isn't nostalgia. It's pragmatic recognition that these engines still deliver value that modern replacements struggle to match. The marine community particularly treasures six V-71 power. Commercial fishing boats, tugboats, and workboats continue operating with engines installed decades ago, many having accumulated tens of thousands of hours with basic maintenance. The engine's mechanical simplicity means competent marine mechanics can service them without specialized diagnostic equipment or proprietary software. When you're 200 miles offshore, that simplicity becomes priceless. The aftermarket support remains surprisingly robust. Specialist rebuild shops maintain comprehensive parts inventories, offering everything from individual injectors to complete overhaul kits. The standardized design means components from different engine configurations are often interchangeable, creating economies of scale that keep parts available and affordable. The sound remains iconic. YouTube videos of six V-71 engines starting and running accumulate millions of views from people who simply appreciate that distinctive scream. It's become part of American industrial heritage, instantly recognizable to anyone who grew up around trucks, buses, or boats powered by Detroit diesel. Modern perspective reveals the six V-71's true achievement. It proved two-stroke diesel technology could be reliable, practical, and profitable for nearly 60 years in demanding applications. That's not just engineering success, that's legendary status earned one screaming mile at a time. The Detroit 6 by 71 proved that sometimes the unconventional solution becomes the standard everyone remembers. 60 years of screaming service in America's hardest working machines, that's a legacy worth celebrating. Share your Screaming Jimmy stories below and subscribe.